I'm going to talk to you about planning for the new reality. My hope for many of you is that you will not leave this presentation the same. Uh, there are incredible emerging challenges that we as a profession have to deal with, and I first have to thank you for the work that you do because you don't often hear the word thank you. I thank you because there are great communities that are benefiting from your work. There are seniors that now have access to services and quality living because of your work. There are families that now have access to jobs and quality housing because of the work that you do. And you don't often hear that word thank you. But I want to thank you before I start this presentation, but to let you know that we have some emerging challenges as we move into the 21st century. Now, I'd like to remind you about the history of our country and growth and change. We are growing, and we will continue to grow. And as I travel the country and talk to communities of all sizes, because some don't like to grow, that from the beginning of our country, and I just jumped here to the 19th century, because we started taking the census in 1790, our population was around 5 million. And then by the 22nd century, our population is expected to be over half a billion people. So I believe that planners, I've said this before, that we are guardians of the common future. We're the ones that not look after your children, but grandchildren. And as I said, there are people being born today that'll be here to the 22nd century. Who's thinking about that? And if we do not do it, please tell me who will. That is something that's unique to our profession. We deal with uncertainty about the future. We deal with growth and change. That's part of our role. We are to protect the public interest. That's something that's quite unique to our profession. I just came from a conference and this gentleman was saying, the private market, the private market. I agree we need to work with the private market, but I don't know to what extent they look after the public interest. They're driven by capital and profit. It's very different. Not that it's not important and that, parent, that planners have a special concern for the long-term consequences of present actions. And I just had a case not too long ago where the council wanted to go in one direction, and I had to actually go up there and say, council, here are some of the consequences if you take this action. Uh, that's not what I want to hear. This is what we want to do, but here are the consequences. And it's difficult, but we have an ethical obligation to share those concerns. But what concerns me is not that point. What concerns me is the consequences of taking no action. And across the country, people just say no, no, and no, and think there are no consequences. Climate change, I don't believe it. That means nothing's going to happen. The problem is solved. No, it's not. No is an action. And no has consequences. And we have to be able to have that conversation. And in fact, we work with many, many communities, and they say no. I have to tell them, you're saying yes to something else. And what are you saying yes to? Right now, the biggest battle in our community is density. People are saying, I don't want density. And I have to tell them what you're saying is young people and seniors, we don't want you in our community. Because in our market, seniors and young people are the ones that want to rent. They don't want to buy. We have to talk about if you say no, you're saying yes to something else. You can't get away with just saying no. And that's the conversation we have to have. Where do we go from here? What is the new normal? What is the new reality? So as I said earlier, if you're just coming out of school, this is the most exciting time because that movement that era that's happening is going on right now, and you're going to help define it. So the big conversation, what's next? It's not just us, it's ULI. It's the landscape architects, it's the architects. Everyone's talking about what's next. And in, if you look at red, uh, of some of those items, these are the emerging trends I believe are gonna be drivers in the 21st century. And these are game changers, which is why I like Jill and all of you here worked on that game changing initiatives because these are game changers. Not just for us, but for the world. Another clue about this list. Some of the things on this list have never happened before. They're brand new to the 21st century. So unfortunately, you can't Google to find a solution for these problems. It's gonna take innovation and creativity to solve these problems. And the public doesn't even know about this. They're relying on you to make sure that they're prepared to deal with that uncertainty, to be that guardian so that we have a plan in place to deal with some of these issues. The graying of America, or the silver tsunami, and I didn't name it after me, <laughs> is a big issue. In fact, in Japan, if you didn't know this, they're now selling more adult diapers than children's diapers in Japan. There was a study that came out yesterday that the world's not ready for the aging of the globe. This is a global problem. And we'll get to some of the other items in a second. If you're a young person, this is gonna define your career because this will happen under your watch. 
So we as seasoned professionals have to help you deal with these issues because we did not deal with these issues when I came up uh, in, uh, in the profession. So this for us is a big wake-up call, but this is now going to soon become our new reality because these aren't going anywhere and new issues are going to emerge. So I believe as planners that we have to understand emerging trends like a stockbroker watches the market. But we need to watch this. Watch what's happening so that we can know these emerging trends and issues that are facing us. That's an obligation that we have as planners. So let's go through at least some of these changes that I highlight in the slide and let's go through them one by one. Let's first go with aging, households, and families. Some of you may know this, some of you may not, but we'll go through some of these changes and the implications for us as planners. The first, as I mentioned, is the aging. If you did not know this, one in five Americans by 2050, I'm sorry, 2030 will be over the age of 65, and today, one in five Americans have a disability. That number is going to grow. Not only will there be more Americans over the age of 65, but by 2050, the number of Americans over 85 is going to triple from 5 million to close to 20 million. Most communities aren't even ready for this change, and I'll share the implications in a second. But the one for me that's a true game changer is the last bullet. By the 2020s, the predominant household in America will be one person. Not a family, one person. One. Variety of reasons. People who don't want to get married and people who are widowed. And man, I hate to tell you this, but wives will outlive us. So that is our future of singles going forward. And that's going to happen in 2020s, and that will be with us for at least a generation and beyond. Now, there's something called natural decrease. Uh, this is what's happening across the country, is that 25% of all counties are shrinking away. The population is declining in those counties. The common denominator is older whites who can no longer have children, and their children are saying, I don't want to stay here. I don't like the lifestyle. I don't like the job prospects. I'm going to Seattle or Washington or Raleigh or Austin. I'm not staying here. Now, I was going to show you what Washington State looked like, but the Census Bureau was down. So I'm going to share you some of the other states where you can go ooh and ah, so I can still get the same effect. So this is Pennsylvania. If it's beige, they're losing population. And you can see them moving to the eastern part of the state, except for Pittsburgh, which is dark. And this is what's happening in more and more states where in some places they're actually anti-planning. So here's an opportunity to do something about their trends, and they're saying no without even thinking about the consequences. Here's another one, West Virginia, one of the top shrinking states uh, in our country. And the only reason why that corner is dark, because that's now the commuting shed for Washington, D.C. The one that shocked me the most is Kansas. They are in a free fall. Same thing in that state. Policies are very anti-planning. And the only thing that's going on in that state is their absolute warfare between Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri. And until I show this to the planners, they didn't even know this was going on. It's because that's the only game in town for Kansas City, Kansas, in order to compete. So here's the impact of those changing demographics, the aging and the shrinking counties, and I encourage you to take a look at it as well, uh, because unfortunately I, don't, I didn't have the slide to share with you. Another shocker is a change in families. Back in the 1960s, five out of 100 children were born out of wedlock. You fast forward to 2009, it's now four out of 10. Four out of 10, it's not just blacks, it's Hispanics and whites, for whatever reason, a woman is now raising a child on her own. In fact, more than half of the women over 30, uh, mothers under 30 are single. That means that's a generation you're gonna have to plan for, for schools, for housing, for everything that you do, that will affect you and your career for a generation because those women are under 30 and those children are young. So your notion about family and who you're planning for is changing and you need to understand that. Now, as I travel around, I go to a lot of college campuses and very often I see that young man talking to that young lady throughout my presentation. I say, young lady, he is not serious. How do I know? This chart tells me so. <laughs> for whatever reason, whatever reason, that sweet spot where people used to get married between 25 and 34 when it was about 80% back in the 60s is now hovering around 50% today. They may be waiting longer, who knows, but this is now the trend and we see it across the country, uh, that less and less people are getting married. So when people say, oh, don't worry about those suburbs and single family homes, they're gonna get married and have kids and move to the suburbs. Oh, really? 
Well, only half of them now are getting married, and when they decide to have a child, the woman says, that's okay, I'll raise a child on my own. Is that who you're planning for? Is that what you're thinking about when you plan for resources and parks and schools and housing? That's something you have to look at your local market to see what is happening. So here is a dramatic at a glance chart that's showing the change in households from 1960 to 2025. Households with children is going from roughly half in 1960 to 28%. Now I want you to look at that slide and if you are a builder, what kind of communities will you design for that market by 2025? Please tell me of a single family homes, raise your hand. This is where we're headed. And I think more and more people are waking up. You are seeing changes in the market where home size are getting smaller and new techniques are being developed. But this is where we have to understand our state, our region, our city, our town, our local market to find out are we prepared for these changes and how they're going to affect us. This is a new reality that we're gonna to have to deal with. This is not going away. This is gonna be with us for quite some time. So what are the implications? I've said this before. What are we going to do in an auto-dependent society when people over the age of 65 realize they can no longer drive? Now the number they're saying is about over 70 is that 600,000 people over this age of 70 stop driving every year. Now, there are people who can drive their 80s and 90s. My father drove till he was 89. However, we're in Florida. After he hit a couple of cars in the parking lot, I said, Dad, it is time. So if any of you were ever in St. Cloud, Florida, your car was hit in the parking lot, on behalf of my father, I apologize. <laughs> but we don't know what's going to happen. And a study put out for T for America did a study and found out by 2015, 15% of all Americans over the age of 65 will have poor transit access. And Port Atlanta leads the nation in two years. 90% of their seniors over the age of 65 will have poor transit access. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a product of not planning. And I'm sure the planner spoke up, but the market said build, 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 grow, grow, grow. Atlanta said don't tell me what to do. Marietta said don't tell me what to do. D. Calpana said don't you tell me what to do. So my question is where's the private market now? They try to pass a transportation bond, and you cannot plan your way out of that in two years. The good news, now Raleigh is another bad news. We're number five in mid-sized metros. Kansas City is number one. The good news for us is that we identified this trend early, communicated to the public, and now they're saying thank you for to identifying this trend, and now we have a plan in place. So hopefully we will avoid the Atlanta problem. Good news for Atlanta is that they are being very creative and innovative to figure out how to address this problem. The problem is they're behind the curve because this problem is only a couple of years away. Other implications, this is exciting for planners. The older people get, the more nimby they become. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> so as our population gets older, what you're gonna hear is no, no, and no. Isn't that exciting? They don't want change. So unfortunately, that's what we're gonna have to deal with. We're gonna see tax bases shrink, people draw down on their equity. You'll hear a lot more about lowering taxes, lowering services, because seniors cannot afford major increases. Uh, and there are some other issues uh, associated with uh, a growing population that you will see that happening in many, many parts of the country when they said, retire to our community. I'm like, what are you doing? You know how to balance it out. But that is what's happening. Uh, and I'll get to the last point later about really not enough workers to take care of us as we boomers age. So we do see the home sizes getting smaller. I actually heard a realtor tell me this story. She said, this is what people are now saying. When people are looking for a home, they're saying, and I'll listen carefully, see if you figure this out. They want smaller homes with lots of big rooms. <laughs> Only thing I can think of is they don't want any walls, but that's what they're saying. They want smaller homes with lots of big rooms. But we now see the home sizes getting smaller. It was a blip last year. Now home sizes are getting smaller again. And I believe that trend will continue going to the future. Other implications, clearly, that seniors in the younger generation will demand different lifestyle choices as they age, grand floor masters, and alternative transportation options. They are looking for smaller homes, preference to rent rather than own. But the one that is really freaking everybody out, thank you, Arthur Nelson, is that we believe by 2030 there'll be 25 and now 27 million single family homes on the market with nobody to buy them because there'll be a disconnect between the buyer, a single woman, and the product, a home built for a family five to 10 miles from the employment center. How, what's going to happen? I don't know. 
There are some predictions how it will be absorbed, whether it's Golden Girls suburbs, where they all live together. Uh, we don't know, but certainly this is a trend that we're facing. This is also another new normal. I see people checking their phones, calling their spouse and saying, time to sell. It's okay. <laughs> you have till the 2020s before you panic. But the question is, how is planned as we're going to address this trend going forward? Let's get to race and ethnicity. Now, when I used to do this about, I would say, five, six years ago, people would literally leave the room. Seriously, and as if that was gonna change the number, but they would, I'd present this and they'd walk out the room. And I was like, Suze me, the number's not gonna change, come on back. I actually had to carry the press release from the Census Bureau because people were in denial, but now I think is more commonly known what's going to happen with demographics. So if you don't know, okay, watch the door, somebody. No one can leave, you gotta hear this. By 2043, we will, no long, we will have no majority race in the United States, and this is where we're headed demographically. And a lot of people are struggling with this change. You see it playing itself out with voter ID and politics, but this is just the beginning as you see these changes unfold over the next 20, 30, and 40 years. So the biggest shocker here is the Hispanic population is going to triple from 46 million to 132 million between 2008 and 2050. I have to remind you this has nothing to do with immigration. You could pull the walls, the dogs, the shotguns, nuclear missiles. This will not change this number. It's for those women at childbearing years that are here right now in the United States. Number two, as you can see, what's going to happen with our children. By 2023, more than half of the children in the U.S. By, will comprise of minority children. And then you can see it rises up to 62 percent by 2050. This is where we're headed as a country, and a lot of people are struggling with this change. It's regional. It'll happen different places. So. As I close, who's going to address these emerging issues and trends? Is it going to be you or another profession? And I say it has to be you. Number two, I'm sorry, I can't see that far. <laughs> Can we give our today for the next generations tomorrow? That's going to be a challenge for us as professionals and for every community that we work with. Can we do that? Can we remember that there are consequences for present actions, but there are also consequences for taking no action? Are we ready for the new reality? And that's something that we have to prepare ourselves for. Next generation will define the new normal. You have to own it, and as seasoned professionals, we have to help them. And then finally, America's changing. Smart places understand their sense of urgency 10 years before it's urgent. And I close by saying, ladies and gentlemen, your community needs you your country needs you, and your planet needs you. Thank you very much.